Yo, what's good, you two? We are back with another Patrick Z. -Z, -Z. I don't know who Lil Ma Ma Mabu, Mabu, Mabu. I'm sorry if I'm messing your name up. I don't know who you are, my brother, but my nephew be talking about you a lot. Like, nigga, if you scroll down to some videos, this nigga, he done did a reaction to that. Or he had me and him do a reaction to it. I don't know who where he is, but here we is again. Hit that sub button, let's get into the video. Lil Mabu is an 18-year-old drill rapper who is still in high school while being one of the most talked about upcoming artists today. Uh, he is being he praised for his genius marketing rapper. strategy on TikTok, which has led to him generating millions of streams across all major platforms. Hopefully now, drill rap is known like to discuss either. and potentially glamorize the violent I nature of growing up in the streets. Please. These artists often rap about okay, their well, experiences okay, surrounding Patrick poverty, drugs, violence, gangs, killings, and worse. Mabu covers these exact themes in his music, only he has never experienced any of that. Mabu oh, is the Mabu son of multi-millionaires, attends a very expensive that? private school, and has never experienced wait, hardship. Hello, wait. Sorry to be pausing it too early, but Mabu one of them type of, hey, to my little bros, I hope ain't no big bros doing this. Y'all too old to be doing it. If, if, you, if you a big bro, and you outside, acting like you in the street, knowing you ain't in the street, you a tax paying man, just like me, Man, get your butt. Get your butt back on that porch. Stop going outside. Hope somebody hurt you. But look, my boo. My boo. Go to college, bro. Matter of fact, I don't know if you need college because... I mean, you hype down here, but you can end out like a... You can end up like a couple people. A little pump. Y'all know where else I'm going with this, but... Hey, my boo, I hope you got something good coming out of this music, because, nigga, them streets ain't it, my boy. You ain't, that ain't you, my boy. Chip like his drill rap counterparts. However, what makes Mabu so beloved is that he's embracing his privilege and leaning into hey, it for jokes. 50% of the people think the it's funny that he pretends so to be a gangster. Like the other 50% think it's corny, insane. but they both stream his music regardless. Although Mabu is being considered a marketing genius for these efforts, nothing he is doing here is new. How like for, for, like, for that show in Atlanta to be... I'm, I'm gonna take matter of fact a couple shows that's like so good on like just breaking yeah you, you get what I'm trying to say I'm trying to use a big word but I can't get it out but look bring the pitch every day you got Atlanta you got the Simpsons you got uh, American Dad you got uh it's a couple shows it's a couple couple shows that, that, that just make you be like dang we really do be doing it Man, it was an episode on Atlanta. Y'all seen what Paperboy had to go mentor the little kid? My boo was basically the little kid that they sent Paperboy to go. If you know, you know. However, his controversial rise does expose the music industry for what it truly is, and some people are not willing to accept it. Typically, when a white rapper gets any type of attention on the internet, they are rejected, labeled corny, or a culture vulture. Mac Miller got this treatment. So did Post Malone. Yo, and that's because this stem- Wait, wait. I'm sorry to pause it again, but I'm not about to keep letting y'all disrespect my fellow brother, uh, Mac Miller. Oh, I pity that brother. Oh, I pity that brother. But look, Mac Miller, I ain't gonna lie. When I first heard, like, I've been listening to Mac Miller, like, since when he had that double XL fresh recovery. So like I say from then to like when he passed, nigga, his music was two different things. When he first started, it was like a bit of childish music mixed in with like him being a real rapper. At the same you gotta like you would have had to like listen to the albums to see that he was a real rapper on the mixtapes. But like when as he started to progress in life and become like a pop pop star, just I, I was about to say Justin Bieber, I'm sorry. Mac Miller, man, singing, even rapping still, he was he was blowing the charts. So like, y'all can't keep like down at Mac Miller like that. No, go listen to Mac Miller. Go listen to 2009 by Mac Miller. It's gonna make you shed a tear. I'm trying to tell you comes from a long history of white artists stealing from black artists. 
Now combine that with a white rapper who is also making music that is inherently violent, adjacent to street life and gang life. One in the head in case my ops dissin. I got goons by my side. Cock one make the block run. Ops duck. People immediately question the validity of Mabu's claims based on his appearance. We saw the same reaction with drill rapper Max the Demon. Turns out he was actually as real as it gets when it comes to the stuff he raps about. The difference between Max and Mabu is, well Mabu is kind of exactly who you think he is. Stay hydrated. Now there are some rumors circulating that Lil Mabu is the son of a record label executive named Jeffrey Vaughn, which is false. Mabu was labeled an industry plant as soon as he blew up, which is pretty common for most artists that seemingly pop up out of nowhere. However, Mabu's real name is Matthew DeLuca, which can be confirmed with this video that leaked of him promoting a non-profit organization in his community. My name is Matthew DeLuca. I go to the collegiate school. I'm in ninth grade. And my favorite thing about Kids Walk for MSK Kids is to getting together with friends and family to support such a wonderful cause. It didn't take long for the internet. See, my boo, that's why you can't be out here acting like you from the streets, my brother. Look, some of us people that's like me, that ain't like you. But people that's like me, my brothers and sisters, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of us done it. We, we, We've been in the hood before. We've been in some terrible neighborhoods. You don't see none of us. Some of us, I ain't gonna say so. All of us, but you don't see some of us acting like we in the streets. Cause I, I ain't in the streets, but I done grew up around some people that act like they from the streets, but they ain't in the streets. So I can see how my boo like, but then I can see how the other dude that look like he ain't from the streets, that's really in the streets, is in the streets, because I done met some white people like that, that, even some black people that look like they ain't in the streets, but, man, they be out here doing some things, but my boo, after that video we just seen, it ain't you, my boo. Internet to discover Matthew's father's name, Peter DeLuca, who is a funeral director and not a music executive. Peter is based out of Greenwich Village in Manhattan. Mabu has filmed multiple TikToks of his father reacting to his music, which is clearly not Jeffrey and definitely Peter. Now, funeral directors do make a decent amount of money, but nothing that would make them seem filthy rich. However, we did learn that Mabu's father secured a $10 million real estate portfolio after a divorce settlement that occurred in 1998. The New York Post reported that Mabu who lives at his parents' five-bed, five-bath, 3,327 square foot condo on the Upper East Side, as well as a 6,182 square foot mans in Watermill off of Long Island. Mabu has posted multiple TikToks of him showing strangers his music in the downtown shopping district in Southampton, Long Island, which is quite the opposite neighborhood where Mabu romanticized the idea of him getting shot at. Matthew just graduated from the private collegiate high school for boys in the Upper West Side, which has an annual tuition cost of 50 $5,000 per year. So it's pretty obvious that he comes from a wealthy family and was not raised on the streets. No, it's safe Mabu to assume that Mabu's right parents were likely boy. funding his rap career in the beginning. But that doesn't really explain how he got connected with rappers like PMB Rock, oh, Lil Mosey, Waka Flocka, yeah. and others way before anyone else knew about him. And it turns out, the reason they connected with Mabu was not because they liked his music, but because he was providing marketing services for them. There were some rumors floating around that Mabu was a savvy digital marketer who was able to help him. Oh, hello, wait, so Lil Mabu, if any of y'all like, I, I'm pretty sure some of y'all that's watching y'all are some Patrick C C C C C fans, am I? I'm either right or wrong, but y'all seen the video with uh, Lil Dicky, aka Dave. He he low key used the Lil Dicky uh method with getting himself known in the music industry. Hey, y'all might need to take a thing or two from. I don't take too much from Lil Mabu if you're trying to be an artist, but take that, right, that, that marketing skill and take that. Increase rappers' numbers on social media and streaming Mabu. services. Turns out Lil Mabu actually DM'd me three years ago looking to do some business. Whoa. I own a marketing company and I'm 15. I'd be down to work with you and I was wondering if I could explain my services and what I can provide. Feel free to contact me. 
I work with everywhere. artists like Lil Keed, 42 Doug, Lil Blurry, and other celebrity clients. My team run group chats with hundreds of thousands of people, email lists, and page promotion with a reach of millions. Through the complex network, oh, our so team is able to grow platforms such as Instagram, SoundCloud, you. Spotify, and YouTube in order to grow your fan base, reach more people, and drastically increase your royalties. We also that. have direct connects to larger blogs in order to make your Google profile much more established and professional, because ultimately that is what's going to help you get verified. Now, I don't remember seeing this DM, but even if I did, I probably chose to ignore it because it looks like every other generic, hey, we can grow your page, spam, Instagram, no, email that we lie. It do be people like that, like, bro, I done promoted my YouTube on several type of things. One of them is TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit. I done promoted them a lot. Facebook, if you go on Facebook uh, groups, that's a good little strategy to promote, like, your yeah, content creation. But look, niggas, niggas, when I do that, y'all niggas, any of y'all niggas that click that sub button, that be watching from Facebook, some of y'all niggas be weird, bro. Y'all be in my uh, messages, like, bro, we can help you go your page from this to this to this. We see you ain't got this. We can help you get this. Nigga, I done got a lot without y'all niggas. I'm not gonna lie. Like, nigga, you, you, you see me in 4K right now? You, you see this? Where I get this from? Not from you niggas in that messaging. Because, nigga, some of y'all ain't helped me do nothing. Y'all niggas just probably wanted a percentage or something. I don't know. But, like, nigga, so many of y'all that say that same thing. And, like, no. Like, bro. I'm gonna give y'all some good advice. If you if you wanna get a good following off this, just upload on the daily. Somebody gonna watch it. Somebody they either not gonna watch it or they gonna watch it. I'm just doing it like that. You you think we went from zero to two oh seven for for nothing? No nigga, we uploaded on the daily. We had a dream seen a million times and there is no real way to prove if his methods were legit but judging by the fact that he was around a few pretty successful artists as well as him blowing up his own music is a pretty decent indication that he was legit but make no mistake mabu never wanted to be behind the scenes he wanted the attention on him some of mabu's earliest songs can be heard still to this day on soundcloud and instagram Hater DM no response to my message. Now I pull up in a foreign SG jealous necklace. To my nephew, if you watch this, I'm sorry, I love you. But bro, you've been wanting me to listen to Lil Mabu for a minute. Nephew, you might be a bot. You a bot? You're a bot. Why you want me to listen to this? You know what I'll be listening to. Why you want me to listen to Mabu? I want to hit on Mabu. I might got to see you tomorrow and be like, well, why you had me try to listen to Mabu? Well, Mabu's on pretty fast. He's been hitting back pretty bad. What is next up in the fight stuff? Then 14 years old, Mabu was rapping about girls and getting rich. He even went the emo rap route for a little bit. You say you miss me, but never want to link when we can. You used to diss me, now you want to call me a friend. Had a go and run up on my back. From here, he experimented with New York Drill with his song Move It. He even paid me to listen to his song when I used to listen to my subscribers' music. I gave him some feedback, and he appreciated it. However, Mabu's youthful voice and heavily off-key crooning wasn't getting the attention he thought he deserved, and when his voice finally dropped, he had unlocked even more potential. The song Demon Time was paired with a music video on the block surrounded by masked up dudes looking menacingly at the camera. Mabu had the imagery down, but his lyrics were tame. Not not very aggressive nor believable. Same with his next track, King of the World, where his father drove him to Harlem for a few minutes to film, but his lyrics were mostly just about getting money paired with gunshot sounds as ad libs. To promote these songs, he mostly used TikTok, constantly using his whiteness as the main marketing tool. He said that he made My white people see, drill music or white boy anthems. Music ain't working. Well, it's really so difficult when you're doing a school project and you grew members don't hold their weight. Like, those are my ops. I snitched to my teacher on them. Mabu was taking the Lil Dicky marketing strategy, making fun of his whiteness so nobody- I told y'all, I told y'all, try to tell y'all, man, I, I really tried to tell y'all. He was definitely taking the uh, Lil Dicky strategy, like, but he was using a different type of format. 
Lil Dicky use comedy as his uh format. Lil Mabu this nigga went outside and turned into a drill rapper and think he in the streets. But he could do it to him. Honestly, this is something a lot of white rappers do. Shit. Eminem did it in 8 Mile, but Mabu Eminem didn't want to be a full-on comedy rapper. Movie, he wanted Eminem people to take him like, seriously. He was seen in the studio with k Flop. Eminem a little different. If you go listen to Eminem music, like, really, really listen to Eminem music, Eminem is not talking about anything that Mabu talking about. He not, like, he's saying he keep the glizzy on him or anything. He just saying psychotic stuff. It, it might be some stuff you might be like, what am I listening to? And then you got some songs where like Eminem is just rapping, like he's rapping, rapping, like rapping, rapping. I'm talking about like double on tundras on double on tundras type of rapping. My boo just acting like he from the streets. I ain't never not once hear Eminem cap in his rap. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm just angry. One of the most promising upcoming drill rappers from New York, Mabu securing a collab with him would definitely impress people. But the song never was released as Flock got locked up on a federal yeah, indictment facing K Rico and a murder charge. One week after K Flock was arrested, Mabu posted a snippet of a song with the rapper D Thang, who is one of K Flock's biggest ops. People immediately saw this as weird. Working with people's enemies is an easy way to get caught up in some trouble. But Mabu claims he was trolling D Thang because he is friends with Flock, because he was constantly posting snippets claiming that D Thang is trash and ruined the song. Even though Mabu paid D Thang for the feature long before he ever met K Flock, and Mabu did eventually end up releasing the song. Either way, both K Flock and D Thang were locked up, and Mabu was able to profit from both of them. From there, Mabu oh, linked up with another Bronx drill ball. rapper, Sha E K who is another enemy of K-Flock. Maybe Mabu didn't know, or maybe he didn't care. Then on the track Everyone K, Mabu dissed one of Shah's op, Use G's, labeling him a rat and threatening him multiple times. Lil Mabu making it out of the suburbs with this one, bro making it into the hood with this one. It seemed like Mabu was just trying to insert himself into a beef for status, because he has no actual ops in the Hamptons. People were confused how- Mabu was really just playing like the, uh, my boo was playing a clout game. He was like, I, right, I'm gonna go get one drill rapper, which is K Flocker, on the song once. Uh, we can't really get in contact with him right now because you know he, he way in school. He, y'all know what that means. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. But look, he way in school right now. Uh, can't nobody reach him right now. His people probably ain't gonna care about me. I'm just my boo. I'm about to go to his ops. Then I'm gonna make a song with his ops because they can't reach me right now. And then when he get arrested, I'm gonna make a song with his ops. He just playing the cloud game. Like he he using y'all people, bro. My boo low key smart. I ain't gonna lie. He 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 done, but he's smart. Now he was getting to collaborate with all these artists despite them being enemies. He could have been providing digital marketing services in exchange for a feature, but he was likely just paying them. He has no affiliation to he any blocker gang, so he could just work with them individually, then safely go back home to the Upper East Side. One thing about rappers is they all have a price. 5k, 10k, 20k would be nothing for Mabu's dad to invest in his son's new hobby. After all, his dad was helping him a lot with his TikTok marketing. While rolling out his song, No Snitching, Mabu's father fake reacted to the song, then dissed 6 9 and said, we making it out with this one, joking about making it out of the hood. But the thing that really made him go viral was the music video, where he put a red laser beam on a knife while rapping about never snitching. The song stole the late King Von's iconic flow from Tooker to the O. This video got 20 million views on TikTok and was most people's first introduction to the rapper. Views? His follower counts exploded, yeah, and now all he had to do was just be consistent. He continued to make fun of himself for attention. Like, what you got on you? Like, oh, he got the now. Delete that. These are the things that push my buttons. Why would you post that with no clarification whatsoever? It was a fake firearm, and now I might have to take legal action. But his next song with rapper Didi Osama was going to shock the internet. Mabu, Mabu and Didi made a melodic trap ballad Stop. that transitions to a gritty drill track midway through. The transition features a dramatization of Lil Mabu getting shot.
You can tell Mabu never been in a situation like that, that Mabu says, thank God, that's the plan. Obviously nobody wants to get shot, but critics look at Mabu so strange he... for romanticizing an extremely traumatic and unfortunate reality for a lot of people growing up why in the streets. People get shot every day on the streets of New York. Mothers, cousins, sisters, and brothers mourn the loss of their loved ones due to senseless violence. Sometimes they are just going to the corner store for a snack and get hit with a bullet. Then you have a kid from the Upper East Side who drives into Harlem for a few hours, See, pretends bro. to get I don't like stuff like this because, like, when he do stuff like, I ain't gonna also just say him, but when artists, celebs, anybody do clout chasing stuff like this, bro, kids look up to it. Like I just said at the beginning of the video, my nephew is a fan of Lil Mabu. I gotta go tell my nephew, bro, you guys probably stop listening to Lil Mabu because he's just a bad influence on the kids. He out here. Got y'all listening to songs about stuff. He cat rapping. I mean, everybody be really do be cat rapping when you really think about it. But nigga, nigga cap cat rapping. He got y'all kids out here listening to drill music, and he ain't never drilled not one thing. And then he gonna make a tweet and say the plan is for me to never be in a situation like this. So why is you influencing the kids? to listen to this knowing you don't want to be in a situation like this use your mind my boo use your mind my boo like it's some fantasy and gets 20 million views while sleeping in his parents mansion but when critics speak out the common response is you mad he making money it's a song bruh calm down the reason why Mabu can do this but is very simple. Like People really don't care. People do not care about a rapper's lives, authenticity okay, anymore. Slim boy. Jesus blew up in 2015 for being a white drill rapper. People thought he was actually a savage that looked like an innocent honor roll student. When Slim I openly... Just say that, bro. Look at NBA Youngboy. Look at YMW Millie. Bro, look at all these artists that like be in like some real street life situation and all these kids and younger generation look up to them bro like they be deeply invested into their lives so like dog dog look at young thug look at gunner He admitted that he just liked the music and didn't actually live that life, his career was ruined for not being authentic. Four years later, Lil Tecca blew up, rapping about having twin blocks, but openly admitted that he was not about that life. I don't have no straps for nobody. This time... Wait, Lil Tecca not in the streets either? Bruh, I don't... I'm done with these artists, bruh. Being broke never was in style. A new generation of music fans emerged, one that just liked the music and did not care about the status. So Tekka thrived and got respect for being honest. Then 6 9 snitched on his entire gang and basically admitted that his whole imagery and lifestyle was all hey, of the facade to grow his music. Many people call him a genius and don't blame him for pretending. Most recently, Gunna has been labeled a snitch for admitting that his label YSL is a gang. And the internet. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Um. Me, who is Cam? Cameron? Cameron Williams? Me? 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 This dude right here in the front of this camera? Bro, this Gunner album has been in heavy rotation. Heavy, I don't even care if he snitched on Young Thug. That new Young Thug album, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, but that new Gunner album, though. That, uh, what do you mean? That, hey, hey. Hey, yeah. Hey, heavy rotation. Whatever he did, the young thug ain't none of my business. Cause like I said, brother Cam ain't in no streets. Hey, I moved out the hood a long time ago. I'm not in no streets. Even when I stayed there, I wasn't in no streets. I yeah, mean, I keep a couple, keep a, keep keep a couple tactics with me sometimes that I need to let go of. Some I need to keep, but they gonna have them ride. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Made it very clear.
clear that they do not care if Gunna is a snitch or not. They will be listening to his music regardless. Hell, even rappers themselves don't care. Lil Durk is known for being a 100% authentic street rapper from the trenches of Chicago. Smart Durk has lost blood family members due to street violence. Dozens of his friends died in the streets. And here he is collaborating with Lil Mabu, a rich boy who is pretending and profiting off the struggles that Durk really had to live. If someone like Lil Durk doesn't care, of course rap fans are also not going to care. In fact, many people would call a rapper stupid for being a real gangster. Fetty Wap just got five years for moving drugs all across the country despite being super rich and famous for music. Fans are disappointed in the rapper despite their favorite song from him is literally about selling drugs. But it makes you wonder, why do fans need to be entertained by violence and murder? Why does a kid like Lil Mabu have to pretend to be a gangster despite everyone knowing he isn't one to get attention? What does that say about the fans? Gangster rap has been around since the 80s. It's not new. However, these days, most rap music that blows up is very violent. Bro, Drill music videos talk. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I can't even lie on it. Like, the older I get, the more and more, like, I, I start to, like, separate from certain music that I listen to. I ain't gonna say I separate that much, because I still listen to, like, I listen to Young Boy and all of them, but I don't listen to them all the time. I'm lying. I've been listening the young boy a lot lately but i don't listen to him all the time i've been listening to him a lot lately but not all the time but basically what i'm trying to say is like as as i pay more attention i've been paying attention to music but like as i grow older and like my music taste start to switch a little bit I'm kind of getting tired of the street music i ain't gonna lie I'm gonna still listen to it because I just love music and like certain songs come on, I'm gonna be like, oh, yeah, my song right there. But then like, where y'all niggas just talk about the same thing over and over, bro. like for real, switch it up. Bro. Like y'all, y'all sound the same. It's like I don't want to hear nobody getting shot at. That's what people say. I don't. I don't. I might want to hear some Drake. I don't even want to hit a rapping drink all the time sometimes. Talking about killing ops get the most views on YouTube. The reason why Lil Mabu doesn't make fun frat boy music that is relatable to millions of kids around the world is because he knows that it just won't get any attention. But when you criticize Mabu for profiting off the streets, people say, keep that same energy for all the other drill rappers. But here's the difference. Matthew DeLuca can be anything he wants. His parents have deep pockets and he has the best education money can buy in the United That's States. Right. He is choosing to participate in something that perpetuates violence to marginalized groups it's of people so facts. he can profit. The reason real drill rappers don't get criticized like this is because these guys have way less opportunities. That's Most facts. of these guys were literally toddlers when they were exposed to drugs drugs, guns, and violence. It's all they know. They can express their pain and struggles, profit from that, and get their family out of poverty. Lomabu literally made a mockery out of this saying, I took a trip to the hood so I can make it out. He has lyrics making fun of rappers being broke in the hood, which is extremely distasteful considering he has never ex See, now that's kind of messed up on Lomabu. See, that's why I be saying, and I'm gonna keep on saying, bro, you can't be out here. Now, if you choose to listen to Lil Mabu, that's on you. I can't make you not listen to Lil Mabu, but, like, but, that's kind of messed up, because, like, nigga, if you're one of them people, like, somebody such as myself, they grew up in a terrible neighborhood, bro, I'm not gonna wish too many people to go there, bro. Some people... I wouldn't advise them to go there, but why would you influence other people to go there while you're going to talk down on the people that's there, and why would you influence other people to come up in those type of situations if you're going to criticize those same people that's there? That's backwards, my boo. Experience the pain they have. His most recent song, Mathematical Disrespect, peaked at number 43 on the Billboard Hot 100, an insane feat for an independent artist. But again, if labels are trying to sign him for millions, his daddy already has that, so he doesn't need to take it. So him being an indie artist isn't really much of a flex. Most rappers sign really bad deals because they know they might never get an opportunity to make six figures in their life. They can't afford a fancy lawyer to read the contract, and they get taken advantage of for trusting the label. 
Also, remember three months ago when John Morant was a guy from the suburbs, got extremely rich, and everyone called him an idiot for pretending to be a gangster? They said Ja was throwing his life away by pretending to be something he's not? Why is Lil Mabu being considered a genius for doing the exact same he's thing nice. that Ja Morant was doing? Mabu's story has two outcomes. He will continue to push this gangster persona until he actually gets into Bro. a dangerous situation, chain snatched, jumped, robbed, hopefully not worse. Or one day he will realize this gimmick is drying up, he can't profit off being a fake gangster anymore, and he will transition to pop music and be accepted with open arms by the music industry. And if his music career fails, and we all forget about him, he still has extremely rich parents who will be able to fund whatever his next dream is. Hey man, as somebody for real that like grew up in a terrible neighborhood, hey like, Do y'all ever sit back and think, for the people that's not from there, y'all ever sit back and think that people that come from there, we trying to think of a way to get out? We don't want to be there. Not At least not everybody want to be there. Some people, they cool with being there. But the ones that's trying to get out, bruh, why would you advise people to go, ah, 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 ah. think, man, think, use your brain. Use, I'll see y'all in the next one. Be, be smart, be wise.